So I just managed 15 minutes before I came, I got a copy of their manifesto that they're going to launch today, App News Manifesto. And you know the, the fiasco surrounding them leaking their manifesto. And then after we pointed out the contradictions in their manifesto, after we pointed out that almost 75% of the policies outlined in their manifesto was lifted from various documents that the PPP has already produced and published. After we pointed out that some of their policies basically not, or just not contradictory, but will bankrupt the Treasury and the country, they withdrew their manifesto. They made some changes. I noticed that they made some changes. But they still have not addressed the fundamental issue. That for you to, to spend money, you also have to create revenue streams. You can't you have to create wealth before you expend it. If you do not identify sources of creation, new sources, sources and new sources of the creation of national wealth, and you keep spending more, you're taking the country back to a period where we had all the difficulties the 80s, because you will have to find a way of financing the expenditure. And the only way you can do it is by debt. And if you accumulate more debt, you're taking our country backwards. So I looked to find the new sources of growth that are part of a consistent framework, because you can pluck things from PPP uh, or from various documents. But you also have to have a framework, a vision, because all of these policies have to gel together. Their manifesto doesn't have any of that, the new one, the new version. I look through, and I'm just going to be random in my comments because I've not read it carefully as yet. I've just scanned to see the sources of the growth and did none of those. But it is so, I, I, not just contradictory, but they believe we have short memories. So take, for example, Amerindian development. And I'm very happy that they chose this picture to put in their manifesto. Isn't this a wonderful picture with these bright, young Amerindian faces. Look at these kids lining up with school uniform and in a spanking new school behind them. And it's taken from now one of the communities. I'm not sure which community. But it is a testimony to what has happened under the PVP Civic. From the days when there, were no there was no secondary education in the Amerindian communities. From the days when they had no scholarship, etc., we are very proud that we built secondary schools in, in so many areas, like four areas in Region 9 and, and in Region 7 and Region 1, and now we have tons of kids at the President's College and the Teachers' Training College and many Amerindians now in the police force, etc., and, and over 30 odd doctors who came back from abroad, now young Amerindian doctors. We're proud of this legacy. We're pleased that they put this here. But what they promise is to establish a hinterland and depressed areas fund for the Amerindians. Isn't this an insult to people after they cut $4.5 billion from the Amerindian development fund and from the community development plans. This money 
that we got through the Norwegian agreement was supposed to go to fund the village development plans that each of those villages had come up with by themselves. And the villages had said, we're going to approach our development from two perspectives. We want to make sh ensure food security for the village, and two, we want to ensure that we have a, a, an activity in the village or a few activities that will generate employment for people. They cut that money from the budget, and now they're promising to create a fund. We already have an Amerindian Development Fund. We have a huge program for community, um, the, the community development plan. Billions of dollars running into it. We have set aside a large sum of money to settle the Amerindian land issues. We are now putting in not just individual solar panels in each home, but we are putting in large-scale solar panels in each of these villages so that we can uh, computerize every one of them. And now all you promise here is establishment of a hinterland fund. It is an insult to, to Amerindian people. Insult, and that is what I'm talking about when I talk about their man, man, manifesto. They they spoke about housing. Look at housing. One tiny section on housing. And the biggest initiative that they're promising on the housing is a house rental initiative. House rental initiative. In this day and age, when our aim is to ensure that every Ghanaian young professional own their own home. They're promising, their biggest promise is a house rental initiative. It is shameful, absolutely shameful. They believe that people should be, you know, should go and live in rent, <laughs> rented homes. We believe otherwise. We believe people should own things. It's this old philosophy, <coughs> the PNC philosophy that you don't create wealth, you don't create personal wealth or individual wealth. People should not accumulate things, spend every cent of it on rental. All philosophy, that is their, their policy. Under youth development, they say establish a national youth council. Now, as far as my memory serves me well, there is already a national youth council promising things that, they're, that are already there. Develop and implement a plan for universalizing a program of technical and vocational tra training. Now, the last time I understand this is that we built, we now upgraded the technical program in, in Linden, Technical Institute. We put one in Essequibo where we have established where one in West Demerara, in Region 5, we have in Region 6. So we are already doing this. But we have also promised through various programs not to take kids and send them in the interior to march, but at least 8,000 youngsters will be trained in tech voc education, people, school dropouts, etc that are not even part of the formal TechVoc training system. And we went even further. We're not going to universalize TechVoc training. We want to universalize ed university level training, that is tertiary education, through an online program that will reach Linden, Essequibo, Burbies, any part of this country so that people can do a degree without even attending the physical campus. That is what we are working on, a big vision. So, so some of these things, they promise a lot of investigations, investigations into everything under the sun, the specialty hospital, the airport, Marriott, etc. Their whole tenure will be about investigations. But, but I saw 
something than the infrastructure. Isn't it amazing that they are promising now to build the Brazil road, to do the Brazil road, to construct a deep water harbor, to do the hydro, to do national airstrips, etc. Isn't it? Doesn't this look very familiar to you? I can, I can show you that it's lifted. The entire section on infrastructure is almost lifted from some, even word for word from some of the things that we proposed. And then I come to the end. Just because I'm not doing this in any special order. I think it's a uh, manifesto, as I said before, lacks imagination. It's uh, some v vague promises and some specific promises that are not connected to a strategy. It, it does not offer how we are going to finance these, these promises, and uh, that can only lead to failure. 